So just, you know, kind of walk us through, let us know what you got in the bag and the box and yeah. we can take a look and, you know, give the audience and behind the scene. Yeah, definitely. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate hanging out with you. You've been my ride back and forth and Brad's behind the camera. We've had a blast. It's been a lot of work. This was my first year doing Cedia. I knew what I wanted to bring as far as camera equipment, but I knew I needed help. Um, I needed help with a cameraman because I wanted to be able to focus on whoever I'm having a conversation with. And when I started out my channel, it was just me. And it's still pretty much me most of the time, but I knew this was gonna be different because 10 brands had asked me to make content for them and hired me to make some sponsored content. So I wanted to provide the best value and the best product, I guess, or best video and my attention to them uh, without having to worry about the technical aspect. I'll let Brad worry about um, the ISO on the uh, uh, camera and shutter speed and aperture and lighting and all that stuff so that I can just focus on helping them tell their story and helping them to really just convey their message to you guys who love audio and video and home theater. So for the most part, I, you know, of course, I didn't always start off this. This is four years of figuring out what do I need for something like this. So I've been to a couple of events. Uh, we had M-Wave, our own event, so I had to pack all this gear. Um, I've been to two, well, technically three home theater tours. I did one in Kansas City, and I did one in, well, technically it's two because um, Missouri and Illinois. But during those, I found that, you know, gear is important, and getting all that from Florida is, is kind of difficult because we have to fly, you know. So how do we get it there safely? So I bought, it's nothing fancy, but I bought a hard case to try to protect it because this is going, uh, this is bag as it's being checked. So inside here, if it doesn't dump out, I've just got some foam. There's two lights in here, two LED lights. So when we're in places like home theaters, you know, these lights, I can pull out the LED, RGB, so I can change colors. Uh, but really I'm just lighting up subjects. This year I did buy two battery packs instead of having to plug them in. So that definitely came in handy. So I've got two in there and then I just stuff all of this around there to kind of keep those um, intact. There is um, just a uh, towel right here. And then I've got a box here, if you'll hand me yep. that one, I can just bring Put it over here. Yep. So inside this, I'll show you what this is, but that box sits there. So you can see it, it's pretty stable. It's not gonna shift, so I don't have to worry about that. And I'll show that because that's actually attached here. Inside this part, We've got basically the cables for these two lights. Okay. Inside here is the tripod head. So okay. that is a pretty nice head from Manfrotto. Really love what they provide. Pretty high professional stuff there. It's probably about 325 bucks just for the head. Yeah, and that's really good because I wouldn't even think to protect yeah. the tripod head. Yeah, because I don't want to damage. I mean, think about it. they're throwing this, I mean, all over in the airport. So I want to protect it. So, I mean, so far that's worked out really well. Yeah. So we've got that, <laughs> you know, again, I love these Velcro strips, man. I use them for everything in home theater. I also use them in travel. So this is just two tripod um, for the two lights. So those go in there. Here's an actual real small tripod Manfrotto um, tripod. So it kind of folds up in there. Got a little bag, protects that. And it's really lightweight, and that's what I really need with travel. I want to be carrying something that's super, super heavy. Two extension cords here. Don't need to pop those out. And those two batteries that I bought for the lights. So I can use that without having to plug in. So that was something new for this trip. And I was hesitant to buy them because they're like 90 bucks. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Will it make it easier? And it totally did because we could plug them in, just move them around. We don't have to worry about cords and, you know, finding power outlets and all that stuff. So that's that. So this box here is this right here. So when we were preparing for this trip, Brad, who's behind the camera, he said, Michael, one thing that would help us really just kind of stabilize that footage is a like over the shoulder rig. In the past, I've used my Ronin S. So that's a gimbal, keeps the camera really, really stable, but it's heavy and the whole time you're doing this. So you're walking around, you're carrying it, and that's a lot of weight, and so it puts a lot of strain on your arms. So the shoulder rig's pretty slick. So this just pulls down. 
unscrew this. Mount your camera up here, just tighten it down. And so Brad would be walking around like this. Good. So he can just get some really, really smooth shots with that and it keeps it stable. One thing we did realize I do need to buy some weights that'll plug in right here. You screw it in, it extends back here. So when this is on my shoulder, there's an extra support. weight and it kind of pulls up on this so it's not as draining and straining on your arms. So this is cool, really inexpensive. Neewer makes a lot of really affordable products. Not the like the highest quality, but, but it gets it's functional. Some, yes, it works, so though. it's not super, super cheap, but it's um, definitely functional. This is a review that I did with Manfrotto. I'm really, truly beginning to see why professional photographers and videographers use Manfrotto. This bag has like everything on it. As you saw, I was able to strap this on here, which worked out really great. Side over here, I could put tripod, so I could actually carry that tripod in here, strap it down there. Same thing over here. A lot of times I use a water bottle when I drink water, <laughs> you know? So got that. I love this. So when I travel through the airport, I can take all of these little pieces here, put that through all four of these. And so all of my zippers stay secure, just like that. So when I'm traveling, nobody can open that unless I unlock it. So again, when you're carrying pretty expensive equipment, you wanna make sure that's protected. Love the fact that this thing is so padded back here. It's got lots of support. Let's see what's inside. So here's all the, <laughs> so this thing literally is packed to the gills. So at the heart of it is my Canon R6. Absolutely love this. I've got a, a 15 to 35 millimeter lens, pretty wide angle. A lot of times I'm doing filming in a home theater environment. So I wanna be able to see the whole room. Um, so I need something that's, you know, that can zoom out quite a ways. Um, again, another huge um, resource that Brad mentioned, he said, Michael, let's buy a cage with my money, of course, you know? So he's like, let's go ahead and get you a cage because that way we can screw different things on like a light. So it just adds functionality. So you can put um, my microphone up here, but then right here, maybe you can hook something else up like his- Like the whole like shoes, a, yeah, like, yeah, like a little portable light. LED light, which is what we used. And it was super cool. Still gives me access to battery door down here. My camera card's there and everything. And then this plate here, can easily slide on top of this over here and mount. So that's typically what it would look like. Yep. So there's the camera, it's 4K. It'll shoot um, 30 frames a second, 24 frames a second. But the biggest thing I wanted was native 4K shooting at 60 frames a second. So I can slow that footage down 50% and get those really, really smooth kind of cinematic shots. Yep. So that's camera and lens um, over here are the same mics that you have. So this is the Rode Wireless Go 2. So it comes with a um, receiver. So this receiver typically would attach just right here on the camera. I'm do this right there. And then that would plug in, of course. So all the audio that comes into the camera gets stored on the camera. And then I can have one, and then I can connect this to whoever I'm interviewing you know, the representative from Kaleidoscape, the representative from Trenov. And then I also bought, well, they're not in here, we're actually using them now, but I bought two little lav microphones. And so these allow me to get the microphone close to their mouth, especially with CD, I found there's so much ambient noise. Yep. Really, the more you can kind of trim that out because everybody's doing audio demos and you got crowds. So the closer we can get that microphone to them, the better our audio is gonna be. So I have that. All this little case, it's pretty hard. It's on, I got it on Amazon. Super, super affordable there. GoPro, I think this is the Hero 9. <laughs> Didn't even use it um, for this trip. A couple extra batteries. Those are just um, some cheap batteries. That's one thing I found. You gotta continue to buy batteries, man. Yep. These, when you're talking about high frame rate, 4K, fast, um, or uh, high uh, video rate, you're gonna go through those batteries really, really quick. Another thing I just bought uh, for this trip was a Rode, um, oh my goodness, Rode video mic. video mic Pro Plus. And it's got a long name, but one thing that's really cool I love about this, the original version 
a lot of people, um, and I used to have one a long time ago and I sold it because I didn't need it. Um, I would always leave it on and I'd forget and it would drain my batteries. So this has, I believe you can do rechargeable batteries or regular batteries. But the cool thing is as soon as I turn my camera on, it turns this on. As soon as I turn my camera off, it turns this off. So it saves my battery. But this is really designed, it's a shotgun mic. So it's going to pretty much try to pick up whatever it's pointing at and kind of reject. It doesn't totally reject it, but it kind of rejects stuff coming from the side above. So it's really, this would be really good if I were, you know, interviewing Brad, you know, and I'm holding the camera and I'm pointing at him if you didn't have a, a mic, but it's just another way that I could mic people up. So we got that, lots of batteries in there. So that is for the R6. Here's my backup camera. This used to be my, um, my original camera. So this is the Canon M6 Mark II. So it's a 4K mirrorless camera as well. It's, I believe, a crop sensor versus um, my R6 is a full frame. Full frame, yeah. Um, pretty decent sized lens. This is a 18 to 35. So it's not quite as wide angle as what I had before so, or what I have now, so that's great. But I carry this just in case my camera goofs up. Yeah. If this thing messes up in the middle of something that a company's paid me to film, I want to at least have a backup. So at least it's 4K. It just won't do 4K at 60 frames a second. That's good. So I got that. And like I said, this bag, I absolutely love. It's just got compartments for everything in here. All right, some extra cables I carry with me, charging cables, more batteries there for the R, uh, R the uh, MK2. Inside here, just a little travel case. That's a couple things. So this hooks up to my GoPro. Yep. So I like this because I took this on a cruise one time. So I was able to swim, extend this out and get close to um, some uh, sea turtles. So that was pretty cool. So, but that's like a selfie stick or you can just collapse it and do like this. So just a good little handle and it, I think it floats. That was the biggest thing I wanted to make sure it floated in the, in the ocean in case I'm filming underwater. And another thing I've got, of course, anytime you're filming, a lot of SD cards. So most of these are old, but typically what I use is the SanDisk Extreme Pro, 128 gigabyte, and I think I have a few 256 gigabyte. So it'll hold quite a bit of data, and then I've got a smaller 32 gigabyte. But again, I bought a little cheap case on Amazon just to protect all that stuff. Yeah, and something that I noticed about your workflow was that after every recording, you took time regardless of what you have to do next yeah. to make backup copies. So yep. you move the files from the SD card and okay. move them to your computer sure. and also create a backup. That was something that I saw was really impressive yeah. about. I would probably just wait till the end of the day to do that, but it allows you to organize your workflow because 100%. you can create a folder for a particular shoot. Yep. And then when you move on to the next one, then you have a clean slate to start. Sure. So that was, that was that was something that I learned. Yeah, so as soon as we finished with SVS today, I, while y'all were shooting your footage, I pulled out the laptop, was able to um, transfer that into a folder called SVS. And so when I get home, I can go to that folder and get you know to work right away versus having to go through all of three days worth of footage and go, okay, where's that footage from SDS? I can get to work on any of those projects pretty much immediately. So I think that's every, oh, here's one last thing. So this, I thought I would use this and I may sometimes, but basically it allows these little transmitters, or not transmitters, but this little pack. So it literally just slides into here. And so this has a built-in microphone, so we don't have to be using this lapel microphone. And then that actually slides right over the top. And so it's just a handheld microphone. So if you only have, because the Rode, when, it, when they originally had this, they only came with one. The Rode Video Mic, I'm sorry, the Rode Wireless Go version one only had one of those packs. And so that was kind of the, the thought there is that, you know, I can use this like this and I can be speaking and I tell me about trend on and, and that sort of thing. But, I haven't really used that much, but again, it's something that I have as a tool if I need it. So that's pretty much, but one thing that it, I thought you were saying, in addition to that, another way that I stay really, really organized is as you see, I just took everything out of this bag, but what did I do? I put, put it everything right back exactly where, where I, yeah. Right, where you got it from. 
The reason why I do that is because, especially when I'm filming all of these, I have to be super organized. I can't be hunting for, oh man, did I put it in this pocket, this pocket? I know exactly where it's at every single time. I can go straight to it, grab my microphone, grab my camera, grab my batteries when I need to swap out. Yeah, you don't want to look into my own bag right now. No, 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 <laughs> definitely. You have no idea. <laughs> so that's, that's my main stuff. So this, I fly Southwest because I can check this bag, check a small bag for clothes, and then both of these can go in the airplane. This goes above and that goes under my seat. The so last thing is a simple backpack. So honestly, this has got a bunch of random stuff in here, gum. We got chargers in here. Bunch of little bricks for charging. I even keep my toothpaste in there, man. Toothpaste, toothbrush, because you know, you need to freshen up if you're going all day. I think this is Brad stuff, so we had some of, these were really, really handy. So these are LED lights. LED lights yeah. So he had a big one and he had a smaller one. Have a little, little diffuser there. So this can fit on top of that cage that I was telling you about, but still have a place for the, uh, the wireless mic. So I carry all of that. I've got pretty much like Tylenol stuff in there. I've got hand sanitizer, a couple pins, nothing major there. This is important. So at night, every single day, we've got to charge a bunch of stuff. We got wireless transmitters, we've got batteries for the camera. Um, and so I bought this recently. It's got USB charging, USB-C charging for um, power. I'm probably gonna buy another one. Um, that way I can just plug in that much more and crank it up. Some snacks. As you found out, one day, the very first yes. day, we went all day and we didn't have time to eat lunch, so we ate a cookie for lunch. So I brought Sir. these just in case. So I ate one of those on the trip. And here, basically just a notepad. That was something that was given to me. And this is, oh, so that's my DJI Osmo. Didn't use it for this trip, so that's if I want a steady cam for my um, cell phone. Cell phone. So, so I'll put that back in there so I don't forget. Right there. And then the last part is laptop. So this is super, super important. So this was a big investment for me. So this is like 2,500 bucks for this laptop. It's a MacBook Air M1, but I love it because it's super light. I was sitting in the bed um, editing two videos, the first or one video the first night we yep. got here. So the day before CD, yep. stayed up till 2.30 editing that one. Day one of CD, I had two same day edits that brands had paid for. So they wanted the video to go out during CD. So I edited those until 3.30 a.m. And then um, last night I was up till 1.30 a.m. editing the one for Flight Escape. And so this has been super, super helpful for me. A lot of power in that. It can edit 4K. Um, so that is that. And then I've got two hard drives in here, Western Digital hard drives. So that's what you were talking about. I copy to the laptop first, then I make a backup copy to this. And so that way, just in case one of those messes up, I'm not a freak. Of course, the new MacBooks, they don't have any kind of connections other than USB-C. So I bought a little um, hub so I can put my SD card in there. USB stick. So use those all the time. And I think the only other thing in here is just a ton of chargers. Yeah, just different fast chargers. So honestly, in something like this, there's there's definitely a lot of equipment that you know you gotta bring. But pretty much as you saw, I kind of use it all. Yeah, and, and that's the impressive part of it, right? Because even while we were driving to the venue, you were able to pull out the yeah. Mac and make edits in sure. real time yeah. and you were able to continue the workflow. Yeah. So it, it just shows the importance of being able to have, you know, a lot of these gears. And that's sure. something that a lot of us don't see, right? We see the 10 minute video, we see the 12 minute video, but we don't see a lot, a lot, you know? And I spend a lot of time just capturing a lot of B-rolls, just with you working behind the yeah, scenes. Cool. And it was, it was just really impressive, you know, even after, you know, Brad gets a B-roll and you get a B-roll, you still go back and take some time. and. You know, I even had questions that I asked and you walked me through, you know, how to just capture great shots, you know, with B-rolls and, you know, properly placing cameras and different things like that. So it's been really impressive, Michael. I, I, you know, I had 
I knew I was going to have some type of fun and yeah. see there, yeah. you know, with the gears. But I think that the greatest thing that I learned from it was just watching your work, watching your ethics, your discipline, you know, your personality. So that's something that, you know, I'm glad that I got the opportunity to see, you know, and, you know, we can't wait for you to get to 100,000 I appreciate followers it. We're close, on the channel we're close. and yeah. 150,000 next. So yeah. we'll continue to dream big, but yeah. thank you, Michael. This Brother, was really you, impressive. It's, it's I really been a blessing appreciate to know it, you, you know, and your family. And, yes. and we've actually got a home theater tour of yours that'll be coming on my channel. So look yes, for that too. I, can, I can't wait for that. So thank you everyone. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful day.